Hi there, I'm James, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add an SSH key to an old Linux hosting server, even if you've lost SSH access and can no longer log on to it directly from the terminal. So this is something that happens to me uh, on occasion when I upgrade a laptop, or it might happen to you if you've uh, had a laptop that's uh, been damaged or is no longer accessible, and, and basically you've lost the SSH key. Uh, and, but what you want to do is log on with a particular user uh, to a Linux hosting server, and you get this issue that uh, there's no password authentication set up and the public key, or rather the private key that you're trying to use to log on with, uh, no longer works. So uh, what we need to do is actually log on to the server in a different way. And because we're actually using DigitalOcean to host this devquotes.net domain, uh, what we can do is go onto the DigitalOcean uh, dashboard and we can actually uh, work with the SSH keys here. And it's not quite as simple as you might think, but uh, I'll show you the exact steps that you need to do. And it's probably worth saying that if you're not using DigitalOcean, you have another hosting provider that hosts your Linux servers, uh, then they'll probably have some similar process to this. So you might just need to tweak some of the steps and look for the things uh, that you need to do, uh, which I'm going to show you now. So this is the droplet that's hosting that particular uh, domain name. And as you see, I can't log on to it with that particular user at the moment. What we can do is go down to this access section. And this is kind of what you're looking for in other providers as well. And we want to go to this uh, recovery console option here. So I'm just going to click this button to launch this recovery console. And what it'll do is open up a, a terminal in our web browser. And again, lots of other hosting providers have got exactly the same thing. And it will just give us a password access to the uh, droplet that we've got running. So uh, we probably haven't got any passwords set up for the other users, but the root user should always have a password set up. And luckily, I think I can remember the password for this uh, root user. Uh, with DigitalOcean, if you have forgotten that root password as well, you can reset it from here too. Um, but let's go back over here. So what we're looking at is all of the different users um, on this system. So if we have a look at the home directory, you can see we've got these different uh, users set up for their home directory. So I'm going to try and reset this uh, James uh, user so I can log on with that username uh, onto the server. So let me just navigate into uh, the James folder and we want to go in specifically into the SSH folder here and if we have a look actually let me just show you the files that are in here so we're looking at this authorized keys uh, file here and what you should find is that this authorized keys file will either have the old SSH key, the, the public key uh, from the one that you've lost, or in this case, it might have no keys in there at all, uh, which is why we can't log on because when the uh, SSH connection is tried to be established, uh, there's no public key to actually verify our, our private key with. So what we really need to do is just fill that authorized keys file uh, with the public key from our local machine. So if you go back to the terminal here on my Mac, um, so from my home directory, I've got an SSH uh, public key here. And so what we need to do is get that string into the console that we've got uh, open in the web browser. And this is actually a bit of a problem uh, if you're on a Mac. Uh, I'm not sure how it would be on a Linux machine, um, but uh, let me show you the problem here. So we could actually open up, uh, and in fact, if I just paste it onto the terminal here, you can see it's a bit slow because we're sending this data um, to this uh, DigitalOcean connection. Um, but you'll notice that the encoding of the string isn't quite what we see on the uh, output here on the terminal. And I think that's something to do with the Mac uh, system. It's got some weird way of encoding the data that it's sent across uh, to this connection on DigitalOcean. So we need to actually uh, paste that in in a different way. It's probably not too much of a problem if you're on a Linux uh, system or win if you're doing this in Windows as well. Um, but for a Mac, it's a problem. So we need to sort that. So one way we can do this is actually upload uh, this uh, string uh, to a handy little service called bash upload. Uh, dot com and then you can see here if you just send um, some text uh, a text file uh, to this uh, URL uh, you'll get a, a URL where you can actually download that text uh, onto our server so we're going to push that uh, file uh, with this string in uh, up to bash upload and then we're just going to grab it when we're on the server which will make our lives a bit easier anyway and, and stop any copy and paste errors uh, so first thing we need to do is with the uh, SSH public key. So in this SSH folder, we'll grab the public key again, and we'll just copy it into a uh, file called temppub.txt, and then we can use that text file to upload it to bash uh, upload.com. So if we go 
uh, let's say curl uh, bash upload.com and then just pass it in, I think it's at once dash t and then the name of the file, so temphub.txt. And you can see now it's given us a URL uh, that we can then use on our uh, server to actually get that uh, text file. We've got a bit of a problem again because you can't actually paste this directly onto the server because we're getting the same problem uh, that we uh, would do with just pasting the uh, uh, public key. So uh, we need to actually type this out, which is a bit of a pain, but not too much of an issue. So let me just uh, type this in, uh, this URL. So bash, oops, not in capitals. Okay, bash, upload. Dot com and then let me type in the code so it's b m g capital g seven and you have to reference the actual name of the file as well so temp pub dot t x t and if that looks good uh, we'll send the curl command and uh, no <laughs> I didn't type it in correctly so hang on one second so oh it's an actually a problem in the uh, file name itself so temp pub uh, dot text we go try that again okay so we've got that file saved and if we have a look at uh, what we've downloaded uh, it's actually tempubtext.1 you can see we've got that ssh key and it looks good this time it doesn't have any of the weird encoding that the mac uh, was doing there so uh, all we need to do with this uh, file is just pop that into the authorized uh, keys uh, file that we've got uh, in this ssh directory uh, and if you do have multiple ones you can use the the double a greater than sign as well to append it rather than replace whatever's in the file but there's nothing in there at the moment so we'll do that and let's just check the authorized keys file here and you can see it's got that ssh key, uh, key in there the public key uh, so we're now done with the console so we can exit that and just close that down and what we should find now fingers crossed if we go over to our terminal and if we just run that command to ssh in again we should find now that we can log in with that user because there is a corresponding public key uh, to the private key on this computer and you can see now the login is successful. So you go, there's just a way that you can add an SSH key back to an old Linux hosting server that you might have lost access to. And if you've got to the end of the tutorial and you've regained access to your server, then congratulations, you don't have to start again from scratch and delete everything on that server and, and create a new one. Uh, but I'm James, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.